Hey there everyone, I'm Marco Cubé, the host of Expert Experts podcast, and this video is extracted out of a longer interview with Susan Haxon, an Irish woman who has lived more than 20 years in France, and it's now coaching experts on how to quit alcohol. It came from my own experience, my personal experience with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, um, it, it, like, the reason I work with um, expat women mostly is because um, of my own experience. As, like I, as I mentioned before, like I didn't, until I became a parent, I didn't really feel as foreign as that at that moment everything previously like I mean I started drinking one in my teens um and uh you know and of course the whole way up through to like my mid-40s when I when I stopped and um I think that um alcohol had a had a role in my life like in each sort of each uh decade I guess you know, in my teens to help me with um, shyness, um, some like social anxiety, um, through my 20s, that whole sort of party Susan, you know, meeting people, fitting in, finding your like expat people, um, then sort of settling down, getting more sort of, you know, sedentary and like then it's sort of wine snob Susan, you know, and more sophisticated. Um, and then uh, I think when things, became more challenging for me and I did feel that isolation and you know the um the tiredness the exhaustion that comes with having little kids I mean we had our um, our son and then we had uh, twins so I had three little ones at the same time and a full-time job and being abroad and it's the case for so many women and it's it's that huge like feeling of overwhelm and exhaustion and loneliness because and and never sort of having that time for yourself and my own relationship with drinking with alcohol at that stage then became very much a kind of um like a reward for my hard work you know it was my treat and it was very much my um time at the end of the day for me it was for me to have a break um, and um, so many people um, don't like intentionally use. You're not going to use intentionally use wine as as uh, as um, as a tool. But you fall into that because your entire life, from our kids, we learn that you know a drink um, yeah. is going to help. If you feel, if you feel good, have a drink. If you want to celebrate, have a drink. If you feel sad, have a drink. If you're angry, oh, have a drink. You'll feel better, you know? And so you take all that, all that learning with you. Like, like I said, in my teens, I, I, I took that, um, um, uh, like, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like Dutch courage. Dutch courage, you know, mm. when you, you have a drink and you feel a, yeah. you feel a bit more less inhibited and all the rest. And then through my 20s and um, I should say also like when I was in my late teens, I lost my father. And that was um, and that was I, also in hindsight, that was something that the drinking helped me kind of avoid for a long time. It's like, I'm listen, I'll just go. I'd like physically move somewhere else <laughs> and um, and not think about it, you know. So, um, so it it like takes on a role. The longer you know, as you go on with your life, just naturally does because it's such a um, an accepted part of society. It's socially acceptable and it's socially like expected, you know. So it is easy to like sort of fall into using it as um, sort of a coping mechanism and a crutch and and yeah, and that and that treat. Um, and then the trouble is because it's actually a drug like any other, it's addictive like any other drug. When you say to yourself, okay, that's enough, um, you know, I'm starting to feel a bit crap now. It's time to, you know, drink less, not not have, oops, not have that wine this evening. Um, you still find yourself with a glass in your hand, you know. And so I think that happens for, for so many uh, women and 
expats because we have that sort of added layer of like of maybe loneliness, isolation, bit of bit of expat guilt thrown in there as well. Maybe I should have gone mm. home. The family's at home, you know. Um, um, the sort of um, I hate that expression, but the trailing spouse. Um, you know, you you came for for your partner, and maybe you know what about the whole what about me thing, you know? And then and then a woman um, often tend to put themselves last on the list. And so, you know, so then it's, it's easy yeah. for, you know, the wine or the beer or what have you to to take on that role of, of making you feel better and giving you a bit of energy at the so end it's of the a day lot of, and, and all those things. A lot of social pressure and a lot of like, I so it's like the expert part, but then it's all like woman expert. It's the next level, I suppose, like there is a whole pressure on top of that and, and fortunately in the societies yeah, that we live yeah, that's yeah. very present um when, when in that moment of time like did it, you notice that by your own like the, the, the difference of like or, or was also because of your own experience and then you decided to say okay no no i want to deal or talk more with uh, with women because they are the most affected in this situation um i i when i started you know digging into my own reasons for for drinking and turning everything around and and going alcohol free um, and I just and when I decided I wanted to you know help other people and coach and and learn how to coach and 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 learn all about alcohol and how it works um I when I when I went out there I was like talk trying to talk to everybody you know and save the world um and uh, realized that you can't actually speak to everybody not every, you know so who am i going to speak to it's going to be people that i think are possibly you know having the same experience that i had and are feeling the way i felt more importantly you know feeling that um that sort of you know what's wrong with me why can't i can't why can't i just have two glasses of wine and go to bed like everybody else you know and um that feeling of, well, you know, shame for, you know, not behaving as you want, want to behave. You want to be the person that, you know, <laughs> does some yoga and goes to bed, but you're the person in the, in the kitchen with another glass of red when you said you'd go to bed an hour ago, but you have, you know, and so it's, so I just thought it was important that I speak to the people that are living are living that experience that I, the, that I was that said though I have had um uh expat men reach out to me because it's not just you know the ex those expat pressures those expat layers are not just for women obviously you know for the, the other side you've got the expat husband who has taken his taken like uprooted his family and feels enormous about the amount of guilt for that um and the pressure to succeed where where you are, um, also with the leaving the family behind, you know, par or older parents and things like that, you know, and the fitting in, like um, we all know expats like to, you know, meet each other over a drink and everything. And it's, you know, until you, until you start questioning at all, you know, you just don't see any other way of doing things, you know, so. Mm. Yeah, I, I can, I can relate to, to, to that, that like at the end like as an expert also like you see it no and every expert meeting it's like okay let's grab a drink it's like i mean now it's starting to be a little bit different or there is starting to be i don't know like hiking groups or like things to do other mm -hmm. activities and it's but i i felt that the most common thing it's like organizing a chat and going for a drink and that's it no like that's the whole part of it um i wanted to ask you because as far as I understood, like you decided to quit alcohol at some point and that triggered you to try to help other people and, and becoming a coach. So you weren't a coach before that decision at all. How, how did you became a coach afterwards and how did you be, transform this into a professional uh, path? Uh, yeah, well, I, it was, it's all it's all very gradual. I mean, I still have I still have my my day job and I coach. 
And when I started, you know, questioning my whole relationship with alcohol, um, this is in the middle of COVID as well. So we were all, you know, oh. at home. <laughs> and, um, and um, the great thing about, um, you know, sort of questioning your relationship with alcohol and changing how you drink and changing how you see alcohol is that you're also um, like taking full responsibility for yourself. So not only for your actions, because everybody's all about changing, you know, the behavior, but it's also changing how you feel about yourself and your situation. And when I started doing my coach training, I wasn't happy in my day job. If you like it, this short video out of the full episode, you can find the link to it around here and in the description below. Of course, if you are also interested in checking out other episodes, please subscribe and like.